Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how to install Mac OS Sierra on this MacBook Pro. Now this will also work for a Mac Mini, an iMac, a MacBook, a MacBook Pro, MacBook Air, any, any Mac that you have. This is going to work the same way. So let's jump over. I'm going to show you exactly what steps you need to take in order to install Sierra on this MacBook Pro. It's a 2011 model. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the computer on by pressing the power button. And then if you have a model like this, you're gonna press the option key. Now, if you have one of the other Macs that doesn't have the power button in the top right corner, maybe it's right here on the keyboard, you're gonna press and continue to hold that button and it'll give you your list of options. Now, you'll have to make sure that your Mac is compatible with Sierra. I've included a list of compatible Macs down below in the description so you can make sure you can install Sierra on your MacBook Pro or iMac or Mac Mini, whatever Mac you have. So I've got the installer for Mac OS Sierra right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put that into the computer. And as you can see right now, the only thing that's showing up is the Macintosh SSD. But in just a second, we'll see the installer show up and we can boot to that. Now, if for some reason it doesn't show up, that's okay. Just take it out and reinsert it again. Sometimes it takes, you have to pull it out and put it in a couple of times in order for it to show up. But we'll give it just a minute and then that'll show up. There it is. And we're gonna go over here, we're gonna click on it and we're gonna open it up. And it's gonna take it just a few moments to open up the installer, but once it does, I'm gonna continue on and show you exactly what steps we need to take. Okay, great, it just finished booting into the installer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and you have the option to restore from Time Machine Backup, install Mac OS, get help online, or open the disk utility. So I'm gonna click on disk utility and then I'm gonna tell it to continue. Now, once this opens up, you're gonna click on whatever drive is in your computer, whether it's a hard drive, a solid state drive, maybe it's flash storage. You're gonna click on that right here. Mine just happens to be called M4-CT512M4SSD2. Now, you wanna partition this, and mine's already been partitioned because I have it as a Macintosh SSD. But what you want to do is you want to click on partition right here. You want to give it a name. You want to give it a format of Mac OS extended journaled. And then you want it to be the full size of whatever the drive is. Now for the name, you can make it anything you want. It can be Macintosh HD like it is normally. It can be Macintosh SSD. It can just be called Mac. Again, anything you want to call it, you can put it right there. And then after you change all those settings, you want to tell it to go ahead and apply. Now mine's already formatted as that, so I'm going to hit cancel. And on mine, I'm just going to click on Macintosh SSD and I'm going to tell it to erase. And then I'm just going to tell it to erase again. It'll only take it just a minute or two. It should be the same with yours when you're doing the partitioning. Okay, great, it just finished. So we're gonna click done. And then I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna click on disk utility at the top left and I'm gonna quit disk utility. And then I'm gonna tell it to install Mac OS and I'm gonna hit continue. Now, once this opens up, we're gonna go through and it's gonna start copying all the files from the flash drive to your internal storage. And once it's on your internal storage, it's gonna install much quicker because it's gonna be on an SSD. So we're gonna give that just a minute or two, and when it pulls up, we'll continue on with the installing of Mac OS Sierra on your computer. Great, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click continue. Then we're gonna click agree, and we're gonna click agree right here, and we're gonna click agree up at the top. Now it wants to know where do you want to install Mac OS Sierra. So we're going to choose the Macintosh SSD or whatever you called yours when you were partitioning it earlier in the previous step. And then we're just going to click on that and we're going to click install. 
Now this is gonna take quite a few minutes. So I'm gonna let that run and I'm gonna pick right back up once it's finished copying everything from the flash drive onto the internal storage and we'll continue on with finishing up the installation. One other thing I wanted to share with you about installing the Mac OS Sierra on your computer is when you're building your installer flash drive, make sure that it's USB 3.0, 3.1, 3.2. Make sure it's one of the faster formats. If it's USB 1 or USB 2, it's going to be much, much slower when it's trying to copy all this information from the flash drive over to the Mac that you're trying to install it on. So just a little tidbit of information, make sure it's USB 3.0, USB 3.1, or USB 3.2, so it'll be much quicker copying that information over to your Mac. Okay, so the computer just restarted from copying everything from the flash drive onto the internal storage. So it's now going to finish installing onto the internal storage. And once that finishes, we can go through the setup, create our user account, put in our iCloud information, finish up the rest of it. So let's just give it a few more minutes and it'll be done and I can walk you through the rest of it. Okay, now the MacBook Pro is booting up for the first time after having installed Mac OS Sierra. So as soon as that window pops up, we'll continue on and I'll show you what you need to click on. Okay, so here's the very first window that you will see. It wants to know where in the world you are located so that it can set your time zone correctly for the clock. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at United States because that's where I am. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on continue. Then it wants to know what type of layout you have for your keyboard. Now it gives me the default three options, which is US, ABC extended, or Canadian English. And then I can also go and I can show all. For mine, I'm going to go ahead and leave it as the US and I'm going to go ahead and click continue. Here it wants me to connect to the Wi-Fi network. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on my network and I'm going to put my password in and once it's connected, we'll continue. Now that I put my password in, I'm going to hit continue. And once it connects, we'll go on to the next screen. And it wants to know if I want to migrate any data. I'm not going to at this moment, but if you happen to have a time machine backup that you want to restore some data from, maybe it was an old computer, or maybe it was you're just reinstalling this one because you had problems with it, you can restore that data directly to it just by connecting it to your computer. It'll The drive will show up and then you can restore the data. But I'm going to say don't transfer any information right now, and I'm going to click continue. Now, it wants to know if you want location services turned on. This can be very helpful because if you want to get directions with the Apple Maps or if you want to see what the weather looks like outside or if you want local news, all of these things might be helpful. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on and then I'm going to click continue just because I want to be able to have those things. Next, it wants me to sign in with my Apple ID and my password. Now you would know what your Apple ID and your password is because it would be on your phone or your Apple Watch or maybe it's another Mac that you have. Or if you don't have one, you could go ahead and you can create a new one right here. I'm gonna go ahead and skip this step right now, but you would just put in your email address, which is your ID, and then you would put in your password so that you would be able to connect to your Apple ID account. I'm going to click don't sign in and I'm going to click continue, but you may want to sign into yours. And then it wants to know, are you sure? And I'm going to tell it to skip. Now here you have to agree to Apple's terms and conditions. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on agree. And then I'm going to agree again because it wants to make sure that I've read it. Here it wants to know what you want your name to be for your account on the computer. 
I'm going to call mine IT101. And then you can choose if you want to have a password or if you don't. I'm going to see if it'll let me continue without a password. And it won't. It wants a password. So I'm just going to make up an easy password so I can remember it. And then I'm going to go ahead and click continue. Now, after it's created the account, you'll be able to log in with that account and that password that you put in. And you might also want to put the password hint in too. I just didn't include one. Now, it wants to know if you want to share your Mac analytics with Apple and if you want to share the crash data with app developers. Now, you can choose whether or not to leave either one of those on. I'm just going to leave them on and click continue. It doesn't really bother me either way. And then I'm gonna allow it to have Siri on the Mac. It's very helpful. She can help you add things to your calendar, look up things. So if you'd like, you can leave it on or you can turn it off, whatever you prefer. I'm gonna leave it on and hit continue. And then it looks like that may be the last step that we need to take. And then it'll take you right into your Mac operating system, which is of course 10.12 Sierra. So there you go. And as you can see right up here, on the Apple about this Mac, there we go, 10.12.6. Now there may be a few lingering updates, but 10.12.6 was the most recent release of Mac OS Sierra. Like I said, there may be a few under software update that you may need to install, just a few little updates for like iTunes or maybe there's a firmware update. So you might wanna go in and do that update, but that's, all you have to do in order to get Mac OS Sierra installed on your Mac. And again, I've included a list down below in the description of all the Macs that support Mac OS Sierra. Thanks so much, everybody. I hope that was helpful on how to get Mac OS Sierra installed onto your MacBook Pro, MacBook Air, MacBook, iMac, Mac Mini, Mac Pro, any Mac that you have that'll support it. So if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down below in the comments and I'll be more than happy to get back to you. And since y'all do such a great job, if you wouldn't mind, please like and subscribe so I can keep putting up all these great videos. I love doing this for you all. I hope you have a great day and until next time, take care. Bye.